here in Pacific City. I'm going to tie a tube fly. Um, who knows what this is? Um, it's a variant of a Hickman taco, fish taco tied on a tube. It's a variant of a jumbo critter. It's just a fishy fly. And uh, this is an example. Let's see what I actually tie when I get down to it. I'm going to slide that off. So here we go. And it's raining outside, big time. The river is high. I've got some 8 aught thread that I seem to have difficulty getting a hold of here. Have a Pro Sport Fisher Classic tube and a medium on my flexi needle. Got a little bit of cement there. So I'm going to use some Eat a Peach Fusion Dub for the butt. And while I was typically spinning this on with a dubbing twirler after Jeff Hickman's visit yesterday and Jeff says, I don't even know how to use one of them things. He just goes like this. So it's good enough for Jeff. Who are we to argue? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, what next? Oh yeah, I want a schloppen feather. Now this, uh, this dubbing ball will create some turbulence and some loft. Because I, my real, my end game here is to put a little bit of ostrich back here. And I'm going to get right to that. By the way, you notice I, I don't have thread on the tube up here. I'm just adding a little bit of thread as a base as I go. If you wanted to, you could coat the entire base with thread before you get started with your fly. Now here I am expertly folding my hackle. I'm laughing at that because all of us tying flies here today have wrestled with this process. That worked out pretty good. So I'm I'm trying to with with this hack all this is going to be a little bit of a prop for my ostrich, a little bit of loft and a little bit of bulk, a little bit of presence in the rear of the fly. So if you really wanted to, you could call this a tube intruder. You might be stretching it a bit. But here I have some black ostrich carefully selected. I'm not going to use very much back here and the only reason I'm going to try to even the tips is that they are so uneven. Let's make them, let's see. Let's go about like that. Put a few on there. Put a, let's even these up. So Jay, you have no hook keeper. How, how are you deciding how long your ostrich is going to be? Um, good point. Pure intuition. Um, if, if I made them, let me, let me roll this over and give you an example. I could some people will just put a little tuft like that and just put it on top of their fly. Um, that's fine. I, I, want this, I want this ostrich to be a little bit more noticeable, to provide a little bit more flow and wiggle in the current. Uh, you could make them this long, which would be even a, a bigger fly, and you could 
set your your trailer loop to to hang about this far back. Um, so I'm I'm going for a kind of a medium, not real short and not real long. So there's my third clump. Now some people might manage to get this done with one clump on top that's spread around and then another clump on the bottom. Sometimes I wind up putting in eight clumps all spread around. I just kind of see how it goes. And again, if you're super sharp, and won't like to, you can spin your ostrich. Now I'm just bringing my thread forward in big loose spirals over the ostrich. That'll make a nice level base for my dubbing. I'm going to, um, sometimes people palmer a hackle at this point. I'm going to tie in some, uh, this is small Laggerton oval tinsel. I'm not going to palmer a hackle. Soak that up with a little bit of cement. Some superstitious individuals, I'm going to use some Senyo's Fusion Dub here on the jewelry channel. If you call, the operators are standing by for your order. Um, where was I? Guy, do you remember where I was? No. I was going to say something that must have been important. I've chosen a nice steely blue. Yeah, this is great dubbing. Dubbing? Uh, I think it has something to do with palmering or bodies or something like that, but who knows? So we're just not going to worry about it. Now, I could stretch that body out further if I wanted to, but obviously I don't want to, because I'm not. I've been very happy tying my steelhead flies on tubes. Um, so at this point, I'm going to, I'm going to put some more ostrich on Sometimes I'd put a schlappen hackle on right here, but I think instead I'm going to do another little dubbing ball. But instead of using eat a peach, I'm going to use, this is actually a Spirit River product. It's a really nice red. It's one of the nicest reds I've seen. It's called Rogue Red. This stuff is so, I just found it about two weeks ago. It might be something like Seal X. It's a synthetic material. I just like the color. It's just the right red for me. So now, a little bit of a base there. So let's put some more ostrich on. Now we're gonna we're gonna wonder here. How long am I gonna make this ostrich? Am I gonna make it all the way to the back? Am I gonna do it halfway? Or am I gonna do it? Make shorties. Uh, I don't know. I do shorties. This is definitely more um, intruder style because you're going to see the front and the back distinct. I'm just trying to imagine here what's going to make me happy when I'm out on the river. When it's coming down, it's still high and green. I think I want it this long. Looks like you're maybe two-thirds of the... Yeah. The I don't mm -hmm. think I want it right in here. Although mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of appealing. Let's try that. 
So one of the important points here is that you can do anything you, you darn well please, that you feel like. Now you could, of course, once you catch a f fish on a fly, you might want to tie 30 dozen that look exactly the same, and that's fine too. But you might get the inclination to sit down and tie each fly just a little bit differently. Now I'm going to spread these around. And as Guy mentioned earlier, you've got to be careful which way you rotate your vise, lest you find yourself unwinding your thread and all your ostrich falls on the bench. So that's my third clump. I think I'll be able to finish with one more clump. Now, the last time I tied one of these flies, I finished it, and then the ostrich was a little bit fuller, a little bit more than I wanted, so I actually went back and I trimmed out some of the ostrich hurl. But I think I like that. I'm going to be fishing this fly probably within the next week. Water's going to be very high, probably a, just barely green, just on the green side of brown. Aren't you the optimist? I guess aren't I the optimist? <laughs> you got that right. Okay, so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a cone on this, but... Um, yeah, if you were going to add flash... Oh, 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 thank you. That is a very subtle way of reminding me that I do want to use flash. I put it in right now. And we had a great discussion earlier today about how much is just the right amount. We came to no consensus the perfect amount of flash, that beauty is in the mind of the beholder. This is a couple of strands on each side. And what is that material? This material is, um, who knows, it's a holographic, it's kind of a pinkish color, and it happens to be, I will, you can zoom out and see this stuff is like 20 inches long. It's the Predator holographic. Um, it's real slim. It's slender. And this particular batch is real loose and shimmery. They aren't all loose and shimmery. Don't ask me. I, I, don't, I don't know why. But they just aren't. So I got my flash. Now I... Um, I want to finish this fly off with a guinea feather. I often resist doing that because I like my flies to be pretty simple. But since I want to use a cone, I've got so much thread up here that I couldn't get a cone on to, um, to cover it up and make it look good. I'm going to grab one here with that much thread. See, so we don't want there to be a right, big that gap sonic there. sonic disc only covers yeah, so much. Yeah, it only covers so much. So I'm going to cover, I'm going to put, besides, this is going to make the fly look better. I'm going to put a little bit of schlap in here. The cabin is a little bit disorganized right now. We've got wet fishing gear and we've got fly tying materials all over the place. We'll get it all cleaned up. So here comes that schlappen feather. 
behaving itself quite nicely. And by the way, it, it there were some there's some gaps in the ostrich uh, where the red dubbing ball was showing through, and that schlappen serves to camouflage it quite nicely. Or nicely enough, anyway. I'm just trying to... Now, Tony will sometimes use a cautery tool or a razor blade to clean up this material. I'm not quite as brave or as skilled as he is. So I just wrestle away with my scissor points. So now I have a smaller area of thread exposed. Now where is my... I had a guinea feather laid right out here and I cannot see it probably on the floor. Okay, I have to find another one. Of course, my last guinea feather was all pre-prepared. Natural guinea might be too long, but it's what I've got. So I'm going to be adaptable. I'm going to stroke those fibers back. And normally I would trim first but I've seen so many of these guinea feathers pull out today that I'm going to leave that tip attached for now. Try to fold it. It's actually going better than I had hoped. So, a little bit of cement. Now I will trim, since I didn't pull the feather out. Okay. Now, as I always say, guinea is a challenge to work with. Now, some people grasp their uh, their feather way out by the butt end. I like to grasp it right in close because I think I have better control over it that way. Um, so let's see here. You know, whether all these things are actually true or we just merely believe them to be true, I think believing in things is really important. So come on, behave yourself. Behave yourself. See how that's trying to trying to angle forward. So I think I have, let me see here, I, I've got more guinea that I could add, but I don't think I'm going to because the stem is getting thicker and it's just getting more rascally. So my glasses aren't really good enough to see what I'm doing, so I'm just easing my scissors in there and I think I can feel the stem cut it. And right now I just have one little strand of thread holding that. I draw the guinea back and I'm trying to wrap this nice and securely without moving forward too far and I think that worked out better than I could have hoped for. Now I'll do two whip finishes. And Rob Russell yesterday was saying he thinks it's a really good idea to finish your fly with two whip finishes. And I appreciate that vote of confidence. So 
So we're almost there. Do a little bit of cement all around. Okay, I'll get my ultrasonic disc and that's gonna fit just right. So Guy, if you could come down with me. And it may be fuzzy, but you can see what's going on here. I use a razor blade. Whoops, almost lost it there. Use a razor blade to trim. Now I find my bar barbecue miter. And I put this right by the mandrel so it be in focus. Tony would have had that finished with one little touch. But I always leave my tube too long and then have to melt it down too far and then have to open up the tip. See if I if you just get it right. There we go. So here's what this file looks like from the rear. And I'm going to put it back on the mandrel. Very efficient. Here we have it. And I think what I'm going to do, if are we still rolling? Yep. Okay, I think I have a piece of leader here. So here's a piece of leader that I have uh, tied a double surgeon's loop with an up eye hook. And it's about a three foot leader. I thread it through the back end of the tube. I can almost see, come on. It's much easier to do this when you're out on the river and it, the rain's coming down and it's windy and your fingers are cold. So here is that knot right at the end of the tube. Now I'm going to hold this tube in the center and I'm just going to gently pull that knot right in there. And so now that hook is riding right at the back of those ostrich hurls, which is right where you want it when Mr. Steelhead takes a bite. Okay. Thank you very much. Hope you've had fun and get out there. <laughs>